Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and I'm in my uh, basement workshop. It's uh, cold outside, and I uh, have a stack of change gears here that came with one of my Logan Lays, and, and they're pretty rusty. Uh, it's kind of superficial rust, but nevertheless, I'm going to show you how to remove it with uh, electrolysis. Now, this subject has been covered by many people, and some of the best uh, videos are by Shop Dog Sam, and he uses uh, quite a large tank and uh, removes rust from like 50 pound flywheels and things like that. Also I've seen men use an entire swimming pool to uh, remove rust from the frame of a car. And uh, this is kind of an amazing process and it's, it's electrical and in order to do it all you need is some rusty parts, your Sears Craftsman uh, battery charger, no I guess it isn't, it's a shoemaker. And you need uh, some wire, some electricity, a plastic tub of whatever a size that you intend to uh, uh, de-rust. And this is just a small one. I think it's ice cream container. And you have to have Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda. It's all natural, you know. Now, that don't confuse that with Arm & Hammer uh, Baking Soda. It's not the same thing. And you can get this at Ace Hardware or Kroger's if you're from the Midwest. And it doesn't have to be Arm & Hammer but that's what I get. And it's super cheap by the way too if you can get it. You need to do this outdoors because hydrogen gas is produced. Now I'm doing my whole setup here in the basement because it's warm and uh, then I'll take it out uh, actually near the back door and where I have power and just let it sit overnight because this is a lengthy process but you don't have to stand and watch it you just walk away and do what you're gonna do and and come back a day or two later and I don't think you can leave it on too long and uh, you know the job is done and then you have a little wire brushing and cleaning up to do with the parts this is a 12 volt battery charger so uh, the positive will go to what we call an anode which is any piece of scrap steel and I'll clip it right on there and that is uh, sacrificial and look at uh, how that's already been encrusted with uh, I did one other part encrusted with what I call niter now I don't really know what niter is but Vincent Price used that word in uh, Fall of the House of Usher and I've been using it ever since there's a piece this was a, a rather brand new steel bolt and that's what it looked like after doing one batch so that's kind of interesting to watch. I'm just using a wrench because it has a lot of surface area and I have a lot of old worthless wrenches from uh, farm use, the cheap stamped throwaway wrenches. You can do uh, one part or a hundred parts depending on the size of your container and I've put four of the gears uh, onto a steel uh, slab here eighth inch thick just something to hang it on that will conduct electricity I like my safety wire I guess because I got a lot of it it's a 10 pound coil now if you use too fine of a wire sometimes it will uh, quickly uh, uh, disappear and, and the parts will drop into the tank I'm not going to go into the uh, principles of this or the uh, the chemistry or the uh, electron or, uh, uh, theory of this because I don't think I could give a good explanation anyway but it's kind of like deplating in a way have you ever been in a plating plant that's most interesting and you took talk about corrosion uh, my brother used to work in a chair factory where they would um, chrome plate dining room sets kitchen sets he worked on the night shift. It was interesting to go in there because every other rack of parts had hubcaps and manifolds and all kinds of other stuff that people were running through back when there was no security and America was simpler. I really liked it. I don't like what's going on now one bit. So we'll lower that into the solution and how much, this is just water with a, a washing soda in there and mix it up good and how much soda in there I don't think it matters but I probably got a, a half a cup or so of it mixed it into warm water so it's in the solution 
the negative goes to the work right here get a good connection now why the negative is green on this battery I don't know I guess they call it ground usually I'm, I'm used to seeing black but the other one is red on the, the anode and just to keep things from falling I, I like to uh, clip it to the side like this now we're ready to plug the charger in don't uh, make all your hookups here this is important uh, when the battery charger is plugged in because sometimes there's a spark and if there is a little hydrogen gas and this is hydrogen gas that will come up out of here that is flammable remember the Hindenburg that's why I'm saying doing it outside is, is what you need to do except my demonstration here uh, you know naturally is going to be indoors but uh, do not do that unless you have a way for the hydrogen gas to be uh, uh, dissipated now I don't think it's that large a quantity but you just can't be too careful this is the stamped wrench that was in there and that's how much niter has become encrusted on it with doing just uh, one gear and just uh, so you can see what happens here I'm going to use another brand new 70 year old wrench and I brighten this up a little bit here so I would have uh, a good electrical connection where I put the clamp there's the anode the positive and you know I'm not clipped onto the side of the bucket here because uh, I wanted a better electrical connection and uh, the battery charger was just plugged in 30 seconds ago and uh, look at the action already and there seems to be more action on the gear that is closest to the uh, anode but it almost looks like I'm stirring the water the solution I think we'd call that an electrolytic or electrolyte the solution is an electrolyte a lot of action there and uh, this is going to be taking uh, 24 hours or probably less but uh, I'm going to stop the video here presently and then uh, uh, show you what what it looks like uh, tomorrow 24 hours from now approximately now I have another thing that I'm gonna do here in the future and this is a rusty faceplate that also came with a Logan lathe and this was in an unheated building maybe the roof leaked I don't know and that was in the bottom of a cardboard box but look at the rust on this now I think this is scrap iron anyway but I'm gonna run it through just for the heck of it now there'll be pitting and you're not gonna get rid of the pitting only get rid of the rust and it won't be all that pretty when we first take it out of the solution look at that action this is a very passive process because now you can leave and go about your business go to the bank grocery store and post office now my shoemaker Schumacher battery charger is set on 12 volts and the higher setting here of 6 amps and the little meter is showing about 2 amps can hear it uh, humming and buzzing now one thing I'll do you know a fellow gets anxious to see what's happening so off camera this evening I will um, pull this up take a look at them and rearrange them a little bit because uh, like I told you one seems to be closer to the anode and uh, getting more attention than the other so I'll, I'll re, uh, rearrange them okay I will see you tomorrow whoops I forgot to tell you one thing and that is that I'm gonna take this outside now near the back door and plug it in and all I gotta do is carry out the battery charger and and the, the whole bucket here none of the other paraphernalia so it's not that uh, difficult to do but when I uh, come down here tomorrow I will have it uh, back on this bench for demonstration purposes it just doesn't work very well to do it outside because it's, it's so cold right now for the second time see you tomorrow it is 24 hours later and I have brought the uh, whole kit and caboodle back into the basement here and ran it for just a few more minutes but uh, I told you why I like to do it outside I don't know if that's necessary or not but uh, let's take that uh, product out of there those gears out of there and see what we got 
this is kind of messy when you do this so I just got some cardboard here with a newspaper and let it drip just a little bit and I'm taking it to the sink which is right next to me I'm just going to rinse them off real well to start with That ham looks good. I could go for a slice of that uh, warm and put on some uh, nice rye bread with a pickle. Now wipe this off good and you're going to find that it's, uh, it's dirty, it's, it's messy. Uh, let it uh, get dried and then take your wire brush to it just a little bit. And you need to oil these right away. This could be blown off too. By the way, this is cast iron, not steel. So I did about 30 seconds worth of uh, hand wire brushing. And th these actually are ready to use. But uh, this is 220 paper here, wet or dry. does a nice job doesn't it and that gear is ready to use and oil it be sure and oil it any old kind of, of oil will, will do so I got to do that to the rest of them but in the meantime I'm going to start another project let's take a look at our anode by the way the work was the cathode and Remember that uh, direct current electricity always flows from the negative to the positive, and you cannot use AC. And if there's any boys out there watching this, don't do not. If you don't have a battery charger, you cannot use just regular household current. Look at that, 24 hours. You know, it kind of reminds me of uh, barnacles, although barnacles aren't that color, but uh, the way they build up on a, a piling down in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Most of you have probably seen that. It's kind of nasty. And it's hard. It doesn't just scrape right off like a slush. It's hard. A few loose pieces on there, and it is very messy. Don't throw that down a sewer. The EPA will get mad at you. For my next trick, I got a, a little bit larger uh, bucket here. I don't know, it's maybe a two gallon bucket. And I've already got the water uh, with the washing soda in there. And I'm going to uh, remove the, the rust from this uh, Logan faceplate. And it is quite rusty. So I might leave it in there for a couple days. And I got it uh, wired onto a. Uh, uh, steel bar I need to add just a little bit of more water to that there's the faceplate under the solution hanging from a stout steel bar here and I will put the uh, ground clamp on here which again this is the uh, cathode now I'm going to use two anodes I'll use this old rusty wrench that we already got to start on and then just to show you what happens here this nice steel uh, slab here quarter inch thick weighs a couple pounds and I cut it off to just the right length so it'll uh, rest on the bottom now you do not want that to touch the uh, the workpiece and I will put the uh, positive right here you can use as many anodes as you want you know you might want to uh, have uh, four of them around there and I know I've seen some people that have put uh, you know six or eight around there so I'm, I'm using two 
Now we have to connect uh, this one, of course, electrically to, to this one over here. So I'll just use this uh, jumper cable. A couple alligator clips. Yes? I'm on the air. And I'm going to put that on the wire over there. You do not want that uh, to be in the solution. Now I brought out the heavy artillery for this. This is my 10, 10 amp Craftsman Sears. Now it says automatic, but I can set this one on uh, manual. And you do not want to use uh, the automatic setting, or some of these units now are fully automatic. You know, they've, they've dumbed everything down in America. They've dumbed her down. And now I'm going to plug it in, so watch the needle on that as I plug it in. You see a jump? We're up to about 6 amps. Now we'll take a look at the work. And if you've got everything uh, hooked up right, you're going to see some action in the water. You're going to see the hydrogen bubbles coming up. And uh, sometimes you'll even see the water swirling a little bit, depending on how much amperage you're using. Again, that is hydrogen gas, so be careful. I'm going to leave this in this position for a little while here in the house so that we can uh, watch what's going on. And then uh, uh, when I set it uh, for overnight, or may maybe this will take two days, I don't know. Why then I will, uh, I will take it outside for that and then just forget about it for a while. You cannot leave it uh, on too long, I don't believe, because the action stops when the rust is gone. In other words, it will not consume uh, the workpiece. It will not consume the, uh, the cathode. The, uh, the anode is what is sacrificial. And we got two of those. So the, you know, the current is flowing both ways to the, uh, to the positive. Yet another day has passed. And I just brought the bucket in from outside. And uh, let's take a look what we got. And remember I have... Uh, uh, that faceplate in there and uh, several gears. So, first of all, let me look at the uh, anodes <clears throat> and look at how encrusted they have become. And this is quite a large surface area on this one. That's messy. And here's the other one. The wrench. Equally crusty. And then the products themselves. And I'm going to put them right into the sink and uh, rinse them. Here are the gears after I spent a little time uh, wire brushing them, not very little with a hand brush, perhaps uh, one minute each. And then I stroked them uh, just one time on fine uh, abrasive paper and uh, wiped them off again. And then I put on water displacement formula 40 and they really look swell. On the other hand, after taking this out of the uh, solution and then uh, just drying it off, this doesn't look very good at all. And I didn't expect it to, to, to look uh, real great, but I am going to wire brush it gently right now and uh, then put a little oil. Remember, you want to oil them or, or uh, put a preservative on them right away before they get uh, pretty nasty looking. And I'll look at this, but I had full intentions of putting this on the lathe and facing it off on the front side. And maybe turning it on the periphery just a little bit. Then I think it'll look like new. But I believe it might be pitted after I clean it up sufficiently to, to examine it. I've wire brushed this with a hand wire brush for about two or three minutes. Clean it off again, and this is 80 grit abrasive. starting to clean up. 
I'll do that just a little bit longer and then I'm uh, gonna stroke a little bit on this 220. Starting to look pretty good. I have no intentions now of machining it but I am going to put it on the Logan lathe now and uh, polish the uh, periphery just a little bit and and uh, maybe the hub here just a little bit and then I'm going to uh, oil it and call it quits. Now I spent about uh, five minutes polishing on the lathe. I'm on the Logan now. And that's going to be good enough. Remembering that this is just a drive plate and uh, the finish doesn't really matter at all. But uh, it sure looks a lot better than what it did when I started. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you remove rust by electrolysis. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.